Now, alarming evidence of the lengths radio pirates have taken to protect their stations. They've turned the tops of London tower blocks into fortresses. What they found was a booby-trapped barricade of concrete and razor wire. Phil Bales reports. Back in the early 1990s, a story broke out about four pirate radio stations broadcasting from the top of one of the tower blocks in Hackney's Nightingale Estate in East London. The documentaries and news reports of the time painted a picture of the usual cat and mouse game between pirates and the DTI, but this story told of abseiling teenagers, a flat protected by explosives and drugs gangs. I recently contacted DJ Russia from Weekend Rush's current incarnation. He's been around since the beginning, and this is the untold story of Weekend Rush FM's fight with the DTI, the police and the government. Weekend Rush was set up in 1990 by Dicer, Miley, Lieutenant Switch and Chunks. They were all into CB radio before then and decided to set up a station on a tower block in the Nightingale Estate. They started reading out a pager number on the air for a landline telephone and were all of a sudden receiving phone calls and they soon realised that they had a waiting audience. DJ Rusher joined the station two days after it started as an enthusiastic DJ and crew member. He then went on to become the studio manager and engineer for the station. Rush FM soon amassed a large number of DJs as well as people involved in the station, and before long they formed an alliance with no less than three other stations, which all transmitted from the same site. The site was a single flat, three floors from the top of the block. The transmitters in the flat served the four stations and fed four aerials on the roof of the block. The stations were Rush 92.3, Cool 94.5, Defection 89.4 and a reggae station called Paradise FM. The four stations were like one big family. People thought and indeed encouraged the notion of a rivalry between Cool and Rush, but they saw themselves as one crew with no hate or animosity. They organised joint parties with two sound systems in one space for both Cool and Rush. The guys would go to the top floor of the block and get onto the roof through the hatch, then they'd abseil down three balconies to the empty flat below. The authorities thought they were abseiling down to play music from a studio, but it was only to switch on the transmitters. They'd switch them on and then leave. Weekend Rush's studio moved from location to location regularly to avoid detection by the DTI. The feeders from the transmitters to the aerials were fed through the hole left by smashed toilet bowls, through the soil stack and up onto the roof. So why did the abseil down three balconies? Well, by 1992 the stations were being raided frequently and in retaliation the flat was sealed. They had to abseil in because the flat was inaccessible by any other means. They built brick walls to protect it from entry by the council, the police and DTI officers after these repeated raids. The barricade was made up of a brick wall, as well as a fridge and an oven, and then three to six tons of concrete to stop entry to the flat itself. Buried inside the concrete were scaffold bars that were wired up to the mains electric in order to electrocute anyone trying to break through them. There were also canisters of ammonia and CS gas in the concrete which when cut gave whoever was trying to infiltrate the fortress a nasty reaction. Legend has it that one worker operating a pneumatic drill got electrocuted. The spark then ignited the gas and caused a small explosion which showered other workers with debris. By this time news reports and documentaries had started circulating. The news reports and the police tried to tie the stations in with drugs gangs, but they made their money through parties and raves. The situation was becoming a big problem and caused massive issues on the estate. There was a constant police presence and they started controlling who could enter and exit the Nightingale estate in an attempt to stop the pirates from operating from the blocks. There were even mini riots in reaction to this new police state mentality. 
Nevertheless, the pirates managed to enter and exit the estate and make their way to the flat that housed the transmitters. The people of the Nightingale estate protected each other. Each of the four stations had up to 30 DJs, a management team and 50 to 60 other people who were involved by way of association. Often when the police or DTI were near, or went to other properties looking for evidence, the people at those properties would then warn the pirates which gave them the upper hand in the game of cat and mouse. In one incident there were 15 guys on the roof of the block, and a DTI officer came up to see if he had the right block on which to cut the transmitter wires. The pirates grabbed him and dangled him over the edge of the roof by his ankles before letting him go. There were at least 10 incidents involving helicopters which were sent out to combat the pirates. It's thought that there was some sort of CCTV or surveillance in adjacent tower blocks because whenever they were on the roof, the helicopter would come out. When the helicopter was over the roof on one occasion, everybody climbed down the balconies and fled. Russia wouldn't climb down without a harness so he was left on the roof. The police came out of the hatch one way onto the roof and he ran down the hatch thinking he'd escape. The police were coming up the stairs towards him and he was pressing the button to open the lift only to find that when it did open it was full of police headed up by a well-known DTI pirate hunter called Peter Gooding. Peter asked Russia what he was doing and he replied that he was leaving a friend's house. Peter asked why he had a Rush FM t-shirt on. He was then arrested and taken down to a waiting police van. By this time, the ones who'd fled the rooftops were in balconies and flats and started to throw bricks and even toilet seats on the swarm of police cars below. Russia spent eight hours in the cells before being released with a warning due to lack of evidence. The government finally urged the council, the DTI and the police to pool their resources to combat the issue. It took six months of attempts to get through the barricade with no luck. In the end, the army were called in to demolish the booby-trapped concrete wall. Once inside the flat, everything had gone except a pile of cut wires. The pirates subsequently moved to other estates and tower blocks in London, and the situation calmed down. By 1997, the original founders of Weekend Rush weren't involved in the station, and it had been run by DJs Russia and Vitamin since 1993. 1997 was the year the station went off the air and the frequency was sold to another London station called Deja Vu. Nowadays the station is online after being revived by Russia which couldn't have happened without teaming up with DJ Sonic, Lady Diamond and Lady Sar. Weekend Rush plans to return to the airwaves in the future as a pirate. Thank mm-hmm. you.